Welcome to the second Anima Fest podcast. Um, Are we calling it number two? Oh, let's not go into this again. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter. 1.5. Yeah. So I'm currently in Tom's apartment. Um, he's been working on his uh, little puppet ready for our performance on Friday. It's not quite ready, but it's closer. Yeah, he got some good work done on it. Yeah. Um, and we'll play a little bit of a discussion we had in the meanwhile. Um, intercut with some interviews we made with people around the festival um, today and yesterday. Okay, is that cool? Anything cool. else? Enjoy. I must have not got as much sleep last night as I thought I did. <laughs> yeah, I'm so washed up. So we're back at Tom's flat and he's working on his puppet for our performance on Friday. The washing machine isn't running this time, so it's sound yeah. <laughs> isn't going to be interfered with too much. You were, you were looking at your phone then and making all kinds of pouty faces and I thought, <laughs> you, were, I thought faces. you were taking a glamorous <laughs> selfie. You were pouting a little bit, but actually... It's, it's to, my, uh, to make my cheekbones stand out a bit more. Well, tell, <laughs> tell us what you were doing then, because it looked like you just spontaneously... Took a selfie. No, I was taking. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You can do that if you want. It wasn't. Well, it, I, I suppose technically it was a selfie. I'm taking some images to help use as a reference for the head for the puppet. Do you have a mirror? I have a mirror. Yeah, but that would require me to keep. Look, you know, I've got a I've got a static image now, so it's sort of easier. Okay. I've taken some for the ears. I always find that. It's helpful. When, when I'm making an ear flat, I often... It's weird when I do the left and the right one, I get them confused a bit. So mm. sometimes I make two left ears. Or, you know, I copy one, and then obviously it's mirrored. So yeah, that's, it's nice to have the, the image for those. So tell us, like, what stage <coughs> you're at with your puppet building. I can see it in front of us, but... <laughs> How would you describe it? Well, it's a little spongy man. It's like if SpongeBob SquarePants was a sort of idealised humanoid thing without a head and some terrifying wire hands. <laughs> That's what it is. It's, yeah, more formed than SpongeBob SquarePants. So it's not quite a square. You make a, a wire armature first. So, yeah. Absolute basics here. I'm using a 2mm and a 1mm wire gauge. The 2mm for the legs and the body. And there is, I believe, there's four, four in the body, and three in each leg. Mm -hmm. Let's twist it together first. Actually, first I make a little sketch um, for the desired sort of size. <coughs> the puppets I make for the performances they do vary a bit in size. Mm -hmm. um, they're all they, they're usually around, feet. yeah, yep. they're usually around thirty centimeters. This one's going to be about thirty-five. Um, I think the largest was about 45. Yeah. So, um, but the scale's quite accidental, really. It's. Um, accidental? Well, I mean, I want the, the puppet to be. So, these, this puppet's a bit larger than the, the usual sort of sized puppet that we would use for one of our short films. Mm -hmm. um, that enables me to make sort of more detail in the face, I suppose, quickly. Right, and also for any other environmental details or props that I'm using, it's nicer sometimes to have them a bit bigger. Um, well, they say with um, well, my limited knowledge of model effects and, and stop motion is that the bigger the thing is, uh, the more realistic it appears. To the, the the sort of illusion is more complete to the human eye that it's actually the sizes. Obviously, this is. A puppet, and we're going to be there with it. So it's not really an illusion in that sense. But yeah. if you take some of the films, like the films they used to make with model effects, like Ghostbusters and that kind of thing, they would make absolutely huge sets for the streets and things like that that you could walk around. Because the bigger, the better. And then if you have effects like water and fire and things, it actually looks fairly convincing. And then you have the older films, like you know Ray Harryhausen, where it's like a tiny little ship in a bathtub, and you can tell that it's. Uh, it's really small because the water looks 
way too big. Well, yeah, especially when you're using other elements with it, like water. I suppose water is the one that most people talk about when they they talk about the scaling difficulties with stop motion. You can see it with <coughs> fire as well. I suppose you don't use fire very much in stop motion, but if you have a huge lick of fire, you can you can actually tell that that's just a small flame, and the model is even smaller. Mm. Yeah, sense. sometimes with like explosions, explosion effects. Well, yeah, fire wouldn't be used in stop motion because it would move too much and yeah. then actually destroy everything whilst you're animating. Um, it probably has been. But with the same but with water, it moves about too much, so you don't actually use water. You have to use trickery. No, well, we used water in our most recent film. Um, <laughs> it, it was a very still lake. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is that if you wait for the water, for the ripples to to become still, then water basically acts as a mirror. So it has this mm. weird, uncanny sense to it, where it's not really water anymore, almost. Yeah. So it sort of becomes solid in stop motion. Did you have a sort of illusion where the boat was not in the water, but it was? It would appear as it was from the angle, or did you actually have it in the water? No, we had it in because the water. Because it had to sink, didn't it? Yeah. I don't, yeah. yeah. The, the rig was beneath the boat, under the water, actually. We, so we built a model leg for those yeah. shots. Mm. So you make the wire <coughs> armature and then oh, yeah. the sponge. <laughs> How do you apply the sponge to this? So the sponge is applied okay. with the same glue that I used to stick Pedro's hair to my head. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've got some in the other room. Pedro glue. Pedro glue. It's called universal glue here. So it's the kind of glue that they use for sticking... Um, the heel of a shoe, repairing the heel of a shoe. Has yeah, a, again, this sounds like not the kind of glue you should be putting on your head, but you know. it's it. We, have, we use more dangerous substances for model making, but yeah. that one, yeah, it's probably not the the most pleasant. I'm taking the portraits again. We can just have this conversation again, can't we? No, well. Why do you want to have the same conversation? We can well, it one. might be better. <laughs> oh, right. Try and speak more quickly. Right. And so Tom's taking a, a selfie spontaneously. He's, he's pouting at the camera like some kind of duck man. <laughs> duck man. But apparently it's not because he's vain and he wants to share it all over his social media, but it's to get a reference for his model head. Yes. Because right. uh, he's making a model for the performance on Friday. And it's another miniature, Tom. Another one. I think this is about number... I should know. It's, it's definitely in the late teens now. Might really? Be approaching 20. <clears throat> You've got them all in a cabinet somewhere. They're in a, well, they're in a plastic box in an attic. Yeah. It's my, uh, my Dorian Gray portrait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really working, though. <laughs> Maybe it's a reverse thing. <laughs> All of these puppets are stealing my youth. Uh, so you made a um, an armature out of wire. Good job. <laughs> I just, used, I just used, We've literally just had this discussion. I'll just chop it up and put it in there. Okay. Yeah. So we sponge. Let's and move then on from where we were. Yeah, you on, sponge and then you cut the sponge with scissors mostly. Shape the scissors. Yes, shape the scissors with sponge. Shape the, the scissors with a sponge. It takes around. a little while. Yep. And then. Um, I've applied some latex to the hands, to the scary wire fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, around the neck area where the shirt will be exposing my flesh. And it's quite interesting where you put the sponge on the feet. It has the form of boots. Yeah, so I'll, the heel I'll, of boots coming I'm up around the legs. But yeah, I'm going to put a layer of latex on those as well. So I wasn't. I didn't imagine that, but it makes perfect sense actually, because the boots have volume to them. Yeah, or am I actually. interpreting it all wrong? No, no, that's completely correct. Yeah. And um, I found that I try and make these these puppets for these performances quite quickly, really. I, I always compare it to, you know, when you're doing, like, drawing exercises, mm. for <clears> life <throat> drawing, and you have, like, those quick sketches where there's a like, five-minute pose or something yeah, like that. See you, right. later. See you later. That was Ivana just leaving. Mm. Um, I sort of compare it to that really and I, I, I don't know if it was a conscious choice at the beginning or whether it was just because I needed to create something quickly to and didn't have much time 
because you, I'm watching you create this, and you are moving quite rapidly in front of me. So it's, it's quite interesting. Well, yeah. Well, this is the other thing is that the performance is on Friday, and I have to have a puppet ready. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, but, so this um, week is out of necessity. And also, we have to see some films, mm. and speak with some filmmakers, and yeah. you know, drink a beer or two. Yeah, it's all about priorities. Yeah. Speaking of which. Here's Paolo Orlich opening the behind the scenes exhibition, followed by Dina Velikovskaya and then Veliko Popovic from Prime Render Studio. Thank you very much for coming. This exhibition this year is very important to us, not just on a symbolic level, that we really managed to do this exhibition. Of course, I will just tell you a little bit of how those artworks arrived. The last one arrived on Friday, right after everything was closed. This is Shusaku Hayashi from Japan. So it was quite stressful to to organize uh, this exhibition, especially because the others couldn't come. But this is exactly why I think it's really nice that we've managed to open this exhibition and we have at least those art books here if the authors could not come. Today... <laughs> today? <laughs> no, please, Dina. <laughs> okay. All right. So, here we have Natko Stepanichev. Uh, his work is right there in the corner. There we go. <laughs> story behind this? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. You, I saw some pictures of you with uh, meeting Vladimir Putin or something. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, is there a big story there? Um, yeah, funny story. Uh, I got an, um, I became a, a laureate. Uh, I got a premier from him. Okay. Uh, yes, and um, I was thinking, should I take it or not? Uh, so I, um, I, um, uh, made the research who decided to give me this premier and uh, it was not him of course it was a committee of uh, um, good uh, people I know and uh, who made great art and one of them was uh, Alexander Petrov uh, maybe you know him he's a Russian um, animator uh, director yeah. whom I very uh, respect and he actually contacted me and said that um, we are thinking about your uh, you as a person who will get this premium. So then I said, okay, if, if he thinks that it's okay to do it, then, then I should accept it. Um, so yes, that's how that's how I met Putin. Yeah. What was the experience like? Was it a big ceremony? Yeah, it was a very very big ceremony and. Um, it was actually cancelled because uh, there was a fire, a big fire. So they, they had to invite all the people once again and organize it again. And they paid uh, flights, cabs, okay. and everything. And, yeah. and actually, this was a lot of money. This premium is not only flowers from him and an orden, but it was as well money that yeah. I actually uh, spent on this film. So this was a really good timing. So that went towards the funding of, uh, of ties. Yeah. yeah. So most of the festivals uh, just uh, cancelled. We are. So we made the film like in uh, beginning of the year, in March. Mm. We finished it in March. Here's yeah. Veliko Popovic. And we are like just waiting for better times. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe, uh, actually now the premiere is in Ottawa, actually, this week. So because they said the, the, the jury will actually be watching VR. So at least that, you know. And, and we, we made a 360 video for uh, the online kind of audience. But, uh, so that's the premiere. It's all been kind of lumpsided this year with the uh, festivals and especially VR. I mean, it's 
so next year, you know. Yeah. So that's Prime Render Studio, is that you? Yeah, yeah, that's us. Right, you changed your name? Yeah, we changed it from Lemonade 3D to Prime Render Studios. Uh, we've been Lemonade for like 15 years and it kind of got stale a bit for us. So we, we uh, about uh, two years ago, we decided to to ditch ditch all commercial work and just and just work on uh, on our stuff and we just kind of said let's kind of make a clean cut and just you know change the name change the branding kind of make a clean slate for us as well and then just just uh, stopped doing all the commercial work and just said let's just focus on uh, on our own projects and uh, yeah that's how it kind of that's the Sorry behind. So people are disillusioned with VR just because they, they haven't seen proper VR films. So mm. the VR film we created, this location, is like, you know, full on 3D VR. So you're, you're in the space and you're able to kind of connect with the character on a one-on-one -on -one -on -one level. Mm -hmm. And it's really fantastic. So if you're using it for narrative purposes. It's, it's storytelling in a new kind of way. It's, the thing is we... You step outside filmmaking and move into performance art. Yeah. Because you're no longer directing the viewer with, with you know, the camera, with, with you know, editing. Mm -hmm. So it's much closer to performance, live performance art. Okay. So this is how we approached it. It's like, uh, like you're uh, uh, seeing a performance artist. But digitally treated that you have the, the graphic value that you would have in a in an animated film, so so this is kind. I think this is the this is the future of it. And is there a narrative element to it? Is there something there, that develops through? Yeah, there is yeah. A, a very loose yeah. narrative okay. element, a very loose, but there is a there is a narrative element to it. So, uh, but VR in itself is gonna con on a consumer level, it's gonna go sky high once uh, the Oculus Quest and stuff like this, which are uh, VR uh, headsets that are not tethered to a computer, mm -hmm. when they become uh, fast enough or strong enough to have really good content. Because then you just go like this and you're there. With uh, HTC Vive and you know, stuff like this, you have to have a really powerful computer and you're tethered to your computer. Okay. And it kinda, it's not that. Yeah. But the Oculus Quest, you, you just pop it on your head and you're in there, and that's really like, okay. that's, that's super fun. Yeah. Now that was really cool. We got to see um, background art and animation frames and things and hear their, their, their explanations of them. Yeah, it was particularly interesting to see Dina's uh, model, some of her figures from her film ties. Yeah. Which was one of the films in the opening program, actually. The yeah. What was the drink that was going around in there? It was, a, it was a kind of syrupy brown solution. I didn't try it, but it was a it was a rack here, I think. Yeah, I didn't touch it. Too early. <laughs> too early. Too much on the first night. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taking it a little bit more gently after night one. Is that all it goes? Is that the, the normal procedure? Nowadays, for me, it is. Yeah, it wasn't used to be like this. Wasn't used to, my English is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's important that you do most of the talking. Most of the talking. <laughs> God. Okay. Um, and you went to George Schwischkabel's party? Yes, so he had a kind of retrospective of his work in the gallery uh, in the old part of the town, actually up past the cathedral. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful setting. And there was a selection of paintings from his short films and some of the sketches for them. And I had a brief conversation with him, which hopefully there's some highlights of that talk in this sure. podcast as well. Yeah. Well, firstly, I would just like to say congratulations for the Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, what, were, what were your feelings when you heard the news for this prize? Oh, I was very happy and uh, proud to get this award. Yes, and uh, because I, I like very much Anima First, I come se several times in this festival. So, uh, <laughs> yes, it's a very good surprise for me to get this prize. Yeah. It's um, an 
alongside the prize, we have this fantastic exhibition of, of your um, of a selection of your works, mm -hmm. your previous works from the Galleria Francia in the old part of the south of the of Zagreb centre, in the beautiful part of the city. Um, how, was it difficult for you to make a selection of the works for this exhibition? Um, I'd imagine you have a huge body of, of material. Mm -hmm. um, was it was this a difficult uh, decision to select just a limited number? Of your, no, your you, it's not so difficult because I have I watch a lot of drawing, but there are some parts not so interesting when you saw only you saw. Or, only the drawing. It's important for the film because it's moved, but but sometimes uh, and also sometimes it's different drawing together. And you cannot, or if I have only one background, and I cannot uh, uh, exhibit because I want to keep it. Your films often have this beautiful kind of transitions that are, mm -hmm. it's almost like the paint is alive, like liquid flowing between mm -hmm. the frames. But I notice in the exhibition, or as I perceive the way that you create your films, you're, you're making frame by frame individual images most of the time, rather than using wet paint and uh, manipulating the wet paint on the canvas. Is this correct? Or? Yes, yes, I have a lot of drawing because I, I, I move in the space, so I have a lot of different drawing. I, very few part of my film are with a background and something move different. Almost everything move together, so I have a lot of drawing. Yeah. Uh, I'd imagine uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of planning, actually, to... A lot of what? Sort of Pl planning to design the movements of the sequences of the film. Do yes. You, do you make, like, sketches first and mm -hmm. plan everything and then...? Yes, I spent maybe more than one year just with a line test. Okay. With, uh, at the beginning with very short sketches and uh, to make the editing of the film and when I agree with uh, all the film, I start to make the real animation with, with some key drawing and use uh, this, the same size as uh, the, the drawing you can see the exhibition. It's wonderful. Um, it's a huge honor to speak to you. Um, I, I don't want to keep you too long. Um, there's some delicious cake. It was, it's your birthday today, is that correct? Yesterday, yes. Oh, yesterday. Well, just well, when they start the festival. Well, happy, happy birthday for <laughs> yesterday. Belated happy birthday. And um, just... So, have, have you also worked with wet paint before and manipulated wet paint in a classic kind of paint-on-glass technique? Or are you just using uh, dry paint? No, I, I... Only in one film we haven't seen uh, today the subject of the picture, a small part, it is your oil painting on a glass, but oil just a, a detail of the film, maybe a maybe few seconds, or no, maybe 30 seconds. But all my, all my feet, people maybe believe it is paint of glass, but it's not paint on glass, it's paint on cellulose, yes. and uh, 12 drawings per second. Okay. Mm. Yes, yeah, it has the feel of paint on glass. There's that mm. fluidity of it. Yes, it's. But then when you see the exhibition, mm. as it is exhibited here, we can see that there's individual frames that are painted each. Yes. Each, mm -hmm. So twelve images for every second, as you said. Yes. For one of my films, The Man Without a Shadow, I use maybe six or more uh, cellulose together just to imitate when we paint on a glass. Yes. There are some some sketch some trust of the painting uh, stay uh, maybe more than uh, maybe half a second I've tried recently I've tried paint on glass as a technique for the first time and obviously you, you, you've mentioned that you've used it uh, limitedly in your films is the reason for your not using this technique because the paint can easily um, get muddy and mix the colours yes. because you have very rich colour in your film and I suppose when you paint on glass what I've found anyway personally is that the, the colours can easily mix together and then it doesn't look so vibrant yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 is this the reason why uh -huh. one of the reasons no, why you choose yes, one, it is a reason but the, another, another reason it is I like to organise everything before I made the drawing 
and in, if you paint on a glass, you must improvise. You must uh, you must have a, a lot of uh, experience. Uh, um, I don't have a lot of experience in paint on glass, and uh, I want to organize everything before start the real drawing. And I suppose this is the traditional way that like, 2D animation would be made, with the planning, uh, with, as you said, with the line tests, mm -hmm. and then you add the, the, the finished paintings are made on cellulite, yes. frame by frame. Mm -hmm. um, I understand now why, why you choose this technique. Mm -hmm. And are you working on a new film? I just finished a new film last month. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, I hope we get the chance to see that at a future anime fest. Uh, yes, yes, and, and, uh, in, uh, not in next year, maybe. maybe I just year. finished it and I sent to, to some festival for, 20, well, for the next year because uh, the, the entry form are for next year now. Yes. Well, I hope that you return next year and we can meet up again and, and talk more about your work. It was an honor to, to speak with you, albeit a very short. Could you just introduce yourself? Uh, oh, of course. Uh, my name is Joanna Jasińska Koronkiewicz. I'm from Polish Film School uh, in Łódź. And my first question really to you is uh, how did it feel when you received the award for the school, for the best school at Anima Fest this year? Oh, how can I feel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy because it's, um, you know, animation is always, uh, um, it, it's non-commercial things and uh, uh, the, um, we are on the... Um, Film school, we, ha we have uh, on the film school we have uh, different departments and animation is always a, ah it's a people who <laughs> sitting and drawing drawing <laughs> almost like something in the background something discreet then in the school yes a little bit so uh, this prize showed that we are really strong and uh, animation uh, is very important for uh, for the school for whole school. Wonderful. Well, I haven't seen the, the whole programme from the school, but I have seen a, a, a few films. And from previous editions, there's always been some striking films from, from Wood School. Um, you're also a filmmaker yourself. Are you working on something at the moment? I feel? Yes, i am just finished my um, fairy tale based on Andersen's uh, story, uh, Ole Lukoje, Ole Sleep Well. And this is uh, the third uh, film from a little series, Paint Me a Fairy Tale. Um, it's a film, uh, film used uh, technique oil painting uh, on the desk. So I'm very exciting uh, because now the, my composer Maciej Zieliński uh, wrote the, the music, and uh, for two days we we have a session with uh, making dubbing for this film. And so after three years, <laughs> it's something close to close. The end. Yes, close yes, to the three, yes. Three years is a long time. Yes. How, how are you like enjoying the festival? It's your first time in Zagreb, at Anima Fest. How, how, how yes. are you enjoying yourself so far? I mean, we're right at the beginning still, it's the second day of the festival. Did you arrive yesterday? Uh, yes, I arrived yesterday. Uh, I'm for the first time uh, in, at Anima Fest in Zagreb. So I'm very happy and I like it very much. I hope uh, to come back here. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Next I, year. <laughs> I hope to see you again. It was a, a pleasure meeting you, and we'll talk more at the festival. And of course, thank you very much for thank talking you. to me now. When it comes to some of the films that are shown uh, in this kind of festival, you often hear the word naive being used as a description for the kind of art style, maybe, in okay. the entire film. Do you think naive is sometimes another word for amateur? Yes. Okay. <laughs> What's that cover then? I think usually the words uh, used to denote perhaps um, 
a 2D film that has uh, it's almost like outsider art if someone yeah. says oh your your work is sort of like outsider art if you said that to a professional artist they would probably take offence to it whereas if you said it so it's all within context isn't it? well it's also to do with self-taught or you know educated isn't it that's, I think that's the big difference a naive, well, a naive thing is usually from someone who wasn't taught at least to a high standard then, to draw ok but then there's definitely exceptions to that within certainly within the animated world I think I think there's people who do the naive art on purpose, even though they can do something. Possibly, different. because you can affect a film significantly by the style, the style of the characters and the form. But then maybe the they're film. trying to imitate a, a style which looks like self-taught amateur outsider, and that's what you know. Are you thinking of a specific example? Uh, can we talk about it? Well, it would be, be offensive if I did give examples, really. But I don't think it necessarily has to be a negative thing. No, I mean, this is what I'm trying to discuss, really. Um, no, okay. That wasn't me farting. That was, that was my, <laughs> me making a mouth noise. I make strange noises when I think. Maybe we can just like describe. Everyone's workers naive at the festival and see what see what they say. See how they react. Yeah. Is that yeah, a good idea? What's more, you can say they're naive. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're going to get an award for this? You're naive. <laughs> <laughs> you amateur. I'm not sure. If, yeah, it could be an interesting starting point for a conversation. Mm. Or perhaps. Well, you can do that, I'll <laughs> be elsewhere at that point. Thanks for listening.